evening, everyone. And um, today, I would, I would like to talk about idiosyncrasies. It's very familiar, isn't it? We all have our little something, you know, a strange thing, you know, we think about, you know, sometimes we, we look around, we say, oh, these people, you're funny, you know. And, in, and it's especially when I first, you know, joined the monastery, and it used to usually drive me up the wall, you know. <laughs> Because we, we all come, we have, you know, our co community, you know, we have seven nationalities. We have different conditioning, you know, different culture, you know. It's all, we are all just different, you know. It's not that good or bad, right or wrong, you know. It's just like sometimes things that is normal to me is not normal to you, you know. Some things that is normal to you is not normal to me. And some things that is important to you is not important to me. What is important to me is not important to you, isn't it? And this is how this, we, we started to judge, you know. But we just been conditioned that way. You see, it's not that there is something wrong with the other person, but immediately, just because of the other person, you know, don't do the way that we used to do, you know, we, we think that our way is the best way. I know better, but we just been conditioned, you know, we're just different because we have the culture different, you know. So that's why sometimes we think, oh, that person is a bit crazy, you know, but we, we don't know what, where they're coming from and we don't know the background. So sometimes when we get to know the person and we get to know the person's backgrounds, so you, 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 you actually you, you understand why the person behaves in a certain way, you know, uh, because like we, we just been conditioned that way. It's just that not because of we, we are different. It's okay that we are different. So even, even, even if the, in the family, it's say brothers and sisters, we're all different and we all disagree with each others. So it's okay that we disagree with each other, isn't it? You don't have to try to make everybody the, exactly the same. So that's it. And, and it's just like uh, today I like to talk about this because it's, it's just like also I can share with you also my own all these all this idiosyncrasies, you know, like all this little something, you know, we all have funny thing, you know. And there's sometimes like when you start to understand where is it coming from, we have more compassion to us others. And it just reminds me of one of these, it's a, a true story is that uh, this lady that um, she's like, she's like, she couldn't live without a headphone. So she just listened to headphone all the time, wherever she go. Even she go to the bathroom, she has to wear her headphone. She has to listen to talks, she has to listen to music. She constantly she has to listen to something. She can't live without, she can't take her, her headphone out. Even go to shower, she has headphone. She got the waterproof headphone. It's true story is not, you know, that they show the photos, you know, she have 300 headphones. And then her, her, her living room, you know, everywhere, you know, it's just like, you know, you see some movie, you know, they put out the gun, you know, she put out her headphone, you know, put out her headphone, mm -hmm. put out her headphone, you know, so she just couldn't live without headphone. And then it's really annoying and, and you know, her, her, because her, her daughter is about 10 years old, and then she just, her daughter just felt that, you know, that her mom just don't care for her. Like, once, at, uh, one time her daughter uh, 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 broke her, I think her, her, her leg, you know, and just told her that, you know, you know, I, I, I think I, I broke my leg. And she said, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, she's still with her headphone. Like, she's all in, you know, in that, her own way with the headphone. So the, 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 it's, her daughter feels so hurt. She just feel that my mom just don't care for me, you know. And, and to the extent that one day she went to the school to pick up her daughter and she parked the car and her daughter outside the school waiting for her and then she parked the car. And then she turned around, oh, I forgot my headphone. And she went back. The, the daughter's there and then she went back into the car to try to get her headphone. And then, but I think she couldn't find her headphone and she, she drove the car and buy a new one. By the time she come back, you know, when the time she, you know, five o'clock. And after two and a half hours, she come and pick up her, her daughter. Like, it's so funny, you know, like, you know why it's so strange? Why somebody can't live, up, live without the headphones? Then 
apparently when they started to interview her, and then she said, when did you start to have this behavior? I have to listen to her phone. He said, since after her father and her eldest daughter died, and she, she, they had an a, a, a accident that is quite serious, and she was very seriously injured. And she lost her father and her eldest daughter. And since then, because it's so difficult for her to really to come out of that. And then, actually, by doing this, actually is to run away, to escape. Because for her, like, she keeps listening to this, so she don't have to think about that, you know. She, it's, a, it's a way of, you know, escape. It's a way to running away the pain in life that she couldn't cope with that. She just, but of course, it's unskillful. This is not a skillful way to... To do it, isn't it? Because it's dangerous also for her. She says she drives also with the headphone. I mean, you can't hear outside, isn't it? You can't hear. And it also affects your, the life, you know, her life with her, her relationship, in a, also with her, her, her daughter. And this is all sorts of things that, you know why? Then, big up, when we understand that, we really have so much compassion, isn't it? We, we can understand because it's a lot of pain. And she has no other options. She, don't, she doesn't know any other way to deal with her emotion. And maybe this is sometimes by accidents that, you know, when you, you listen to this and you take away from your pain, you know. Like, for example, another, like, like some people, why they, they have this self-harm? Because, because the, the, the mental suffering is worse than the physical suffering. So when they harm themselves, it takes away that men, mental suffering, you know, because that the, 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 the physical suffering, you know, they, they give them a relief. But because most people don't know how to deal with the pain, how to, how to, how to, how to deal with the pain in a skillful way. Mostly, like, people get into all this. That's why this is the reason why people get into drugs, alcohol, and, you know, and all this addiction. But it's not only... Not only alcohol and drugs, you know, many other things, you know, that is just, it's a way to escape and to distract. And some people get into like shopping, you know, a shopping as a way to, to, to cope with that, that pain in life, you know. I, I, when I last time, a, a, a couple of years ago when I was in Singapore, one of the supporters, that, uh, one of the ladies, she looked after me, she told me her niece, you know, she whole war drops. With lots of dress never worn before. Still got the tech there. She just shop. She just want to buy. She just, you know, this is one of the distractions. This is one to, you know, not to, not to look at it, not to face it, not to deal with the emotion. But this is not a skillful way. Because when we keep running away, actually we are reinforcing that tendency. The more we do that, that is more ingrained. Because we are not facing it, we are not looking at it. Then we started off with the all sorts of things. We start to blaming others, you know, because we just don't want to look at ourselves. We just don't want to deal with it because it's too painful. Then sometimes we, we want to make ourselves feel better and then we start to, to blame others, isn't it? Oh, I feel this way because of so and so, because you make me feel that way, because you make me angry, you know. We, we keep looking outside. We keep thinking that, you know, outside, you know, people, you know, that's, I don't have the responsibility for it, and then someone else make me feel that way, you know, someone make me angry, but we not be able to look at our own, you know, this, this unresolved emotion, and be suppressed for a long time, and sometimes that, you know, since we were young, you know, a lot of unresolved emotions is, is there and keep building up and building up building up and that's like this is a uh, lot of people find it's actually it's become an addiction so addiction is not only like cigarette and alcohol and this, this is the addiction like this lady like putting this headphone it's become an addiction because that one helped her to relieve her pain so that's why she couldn't live without that because she's so scared. She makes sure that all the headphones being charged got battery, you know, everything being charged, you know. So everywhere, the, the bedroom everywhere, so that whenever this one no battery, she can pull out another one. Because of to her it's like she finds some some place to, to 
you know, a place to escape, you know, to not to face, to not to look at her, 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 her pain, because it's not easy. You, you, you lost your, your father. She lost her father and her eldest daughter, you know, and it's very difficult for, for her to come out. And the same thing is very difficult for many people to come out from that. Then this we started to, to think that, you know, oh, I feel this way because of this, because of that. And I, I remember like, you know, sometimes like uh, uh, in the monastery also the same in early days when I just ordained, you know, sometimes I saw, oh, I, I sometimes I have a lot of self-pity, think that, oh, poor me, you know, I have to put up with this person, I have to put up with that person, I have nowhere to run, you know. Then actually when I turn around and I ask myself, actually, actually, I think that I have to put up with others. Actually, others have to put up with me too. I have my own idiosyncrasy as well. People also think they can't stand me. Sometimes we think that we can't stand others. But, you know, some, the same is we, we keep thinking that our problem is outside. We're not able to see, you know, that what's, you know, what is, what are we experiencing now? You know, just to, to, to look at it, just to, to allow that to come out, you know. And this is really, this is how it's very common. We keep thinking that, you know, it's, it's outside. We, we not be able to see ourselves. We always think that our problem is outside. And actually, it reminds me of this, uh, that, that it actually is a joke. These uh, three, uh, these, uh, three ladies, th there were three ladies, and they passed away and they, born, they reborn in heaven. So then, the, and then St. Peter said, okay, now we have uh, new rules. Now you have to practice mindfulness, you have to be mindful. And there are ducks all over the place. Make sure that you don't step on ducks. If you step on ducks, you know, you'll be tied with the most agreement in the world. So make sure that you be mindful. So of course, you know, very quickly, the first day, first, first lady, she stepped on the ducks. And then, and then St. Peter brought Oh, the man really ugly, very ugly, you know, and then tie with her. And then the, and then the, the other two ladies said, oh, I better be more mindful. I don't want to tie, you know, tie with the most ugly man in the world. So then they, so, they try to be so mindful, you know, they really make sure they don't step on the ducks. Of course, it's quite difficult to maintain that, isn't it? So then the second, the second woman, oops. Step on the ducks, and then here come, and then Saint Peter bring this man. This this time, this man not only angry, is even stink, you know. So, so then the third women said, "Oh, I better really get my act together, you know. Make sure I don't step on ducks, you know. So I will, be, yeah, I'll be going to tie with, you know, with this ugly man. So she really take her like." The toilet, she have to take two hours, you know. And then once in the toilet, she have to make sure that she get everything out before she come out, and very slowly make sure that so mindful, you know, not to step on ducks. So of course, no matter how mindful she she was, you know, she still step on the duck, and she was so angry and so upset with herself. She still scolding herself like I'm st stupid. Uh, you really silly, you stupid idiot. How come you do that? You're not mindful enough. You step on the dark and she's really angry with herself. And then surprisingly, St. Peter bring this time, wow, the man is really good looking, very handsome, good looking, tall, really good looking. She was surprised. Said, oh, I step on ducks. Why I've been tied with this? This very good looking and, 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 and so handsome, you know, this guy together. So she couldn't, she was so happy, and, but she couldn't get over her curiosity. Why she been tied? She's supposed to tie with a, an ugly man, you know. So she was really, you know, out of curiosity. She, then she asked, the, asked the man that tied with her. So, so why, why, why did you tie with me? So the man said, because I stepped on ducks. <laughs> we always think there's other people, isn't it? We think, the, oh, I can't put a review, you know. But we, we think the other people are so horrible, you know. But we don't even look at ourselves. We don't know how horrible we are, isn't it? We always think the other people make us upset, you know. But this is how, like, we're not able to, to, to look at ourselves. This is that the Buddha said, you know, 
to, to conquer oneself is much more difficult. So actually our enemies is not out there, it's, it's with us. We are our, our biggest enemies, you know. We, we try to, you know, we, we just couldn't accept that. And then we always have this, an idea of who we are, you know, uh, who we think we are, you know. So, and I, I remember, you know, you know when I was uh, 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 early days in the monastic life, you know. And, um, you know, when you come to monastery, you can't find much distraction. Like outside, outside you can easily call, pick up phone and call your friends and shopping, whatever, you know, go out to have a cup of tea. You can easily get distraction, you know. But in the monastery, you really be, you know, you can't. And then everything amplified. And then you just feel like, why I become so sensitive? Why I become like, you know, I can't, like every single thing also really, really, really hit you, you know, like, you know, you get, you get, you get stirred, stirred up very easily because, you, you have to look at it, you have to face it, and, I, and then I start to notice all my behavior, you know. <laughs> you know, like for example, like, because when I was a lay person, I'm, I used to, be, I'm, used to be a perfectionist. I want everything really good, like, you know, I, and I can't accept like if things that is not nice, you know, everything have to be really perfect and nice. I remember the first time I broke the first vase, I really so upset with myself for so long <laughs> in the monastery because I make sure that I, I'm a good nun, I do everything perfect, you know, that actually give yourself lots of suffering. But sometimes when you're out there, you don't see that it's a suffering until when you develop more, uh, you, you have that mindfulness, awareness, you, you realize that actually this is a loss of suffering that you, 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 you carry with you all this burden, you know. Then I used to, like for example, like, you know, I, because that, this is how, you know, I'm, 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 I'm very good, i good at everything, uh, I can cook, I can sew, I can arrange flowers, I'm like, I, I'm really good at everything, you know, like perfect, you know. I remember like, you know, sometimes like we have rotation, you know, that uh, some other people do the shrine or to, to arrange flowers and I used to make me I saw when someone arranged flowers not in a mirror image when you have left and right so so if, if the leaf face this way this one have to face that way but some people that they, 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 they face both sides like that so I was sitting in the shrine there I look at it I just couldn't stand I was thinking I, I almost want to get out and just go and pull one and put it the other side, and I was sitting there, and I really, I was really fighting with that. I, I know that if I'm doing that, I'm, I'm reinforcing my, my tendency. I know that it's no good for me, but it's very tempted, you know, it's, you, 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 that, that push, the drive to make you, you feel, I feel obsessed with that because not balanced, you know. <laughs> I, I like that, that kind of obsessive, compulsive, you know. Disorder, you know, just you know, like we call it OCD, you know. Oh, just then I sitting there thinking about the flower for so long, you know, whether I'm going to get up to get up to 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 make it the way I want it to be. Then I just restrain myself. I said, no, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. So I restrain myself. I know that because on one hand I do, you know, I I have that I have. I'm mindful enough, I have the clarity, I know where is it coming from. But sometimes because of these defilements that they have the kind of energy, you know, that just push you, they just keep telling you the little ways to do it, to do it, you know. Then you, you have to really say no, no, no to the, to the little ways, you know. The little ways keep telling me to again, again, arrange again for them. I know that I shouldn't have done that because it's not my duty, it's I don't touch other people thing, you know, because we have each one our duties. So I was thinking, maybe I just quietly do it, you know, maybe she don't, you know. <laughs> it, I feel really obsessed with that, you know. And I, I think this is how, because of, with no distraction, I start to see all my misbehavior, you know, and then this, you know, and I can really see that, you know, this gives you, actually it's lots of suffering, you hold on to that, you, you know. Uh, and then I just restrain myself, I say, keep saying no, no, no. No, then now slowly better. Like for example, like I don't like people to touch my things. 
like <laughs> even even move a little bit I know I'm very meticulous you know with things and then like and I, I remember at the beginning someone want to wash my clothes you know like some of the nuns I, I prefer to wash myself you know because because when I hang it I really pulled it very straight very nice and the pegs also same color you know very system you know all this you know very particular very fussy you know so people want to dig for me uh, uh, I think I want to you know that but I, I, I learned to let go. I let go. I said, okay. But ever, even people use what all the rainbow color to pick is fine, whatever color, you know. And I, I learned to let go I, I, because I can really see that kind of behavior pattern. They said, only when, when, when your mind is, you know, calm down, when you have the clarity, you see yourself. You, you have to just look at yourself and just to, to just, you know, to, to really. That's why it's important that not only have the mindfulness, your mind have to have the strength, be able to say no to things, you know. Like another things like, you know, like I remember like sometimes like, oh, in lay life, you know, you think that, oh, I, I want to on diet, I want to lose weight. And then you always say tomorrow I start. I, I eat first, you know, this day, you know. <laughs> then tomorrow, <laughs> you know, and then you keep you not be able to say no, restrain yourself. They say something is important, we restrain us. Because the more we restrain, our, we strengthen our mind. Our mind becomes stronger, be able to, to say no. Because sometimes we, we, we do, deep down we know, we do have the clarity, we see that. But the kind of, like a force, you know, keep pushing you to do it. The little ones, do it, do it, do it. Sometimes it's very difficult, it's not easy. They say sometimes like all this is... This addiction, you know, you, even though you know that it's no good, but you can't help doing it, you know. And this is all how, this is, this is how we develop to certain, you know, hap, uh, happy chair pattern. And we got addicted to that. And it's a way to running from things. We don't to look at things. We don't to face it. Because it's unpleasant. We don't like unpl unpleasant feelings. And we've been conditioned that whenever unpleasant feelings, we run away. We, we don't want to face it because, and then when, when it's pleasant feeling, ah, we want it to stay. And actually, we create more suffering for ourselves because it's impossible. We can't, you know. That's why, in the, that's why the reason why that in the monastery, I, I be able to stay with that whatever agitation, irritation I have because of before I came to the monastery, I remember the first time when I when I when I live when I stay in a, a, a cave, you know. The first night, I was absolutely horrified. I was terrified. I was so scared. Got lots of fear. I I feel people coming towards me and standing there and looking at me. I don't even dare to open my eyes. I use the blanket and close my face and. <laughs> You know, and uh, I, I shared with people last, uh, last, uh, last Sunday because we're doing the sutta class about overcoming fear. And because I remember the suttas, the Buddha mentioned about like when, when, you, when, when, you, when you have this fear, so you remain that posture. Because actually when you remain that posture, is to, you, you stay with it. Because we, we try to do this, do that, actually is to escape, isn't it? So that's why if you keep changing posture, it's a, a way to escape, to not to confront, not to really face that fear. But if you, if you, if you, if you, because I was lying, so I remain lying, you know, that posture. Then I was really with that fear. And the fear come to the maximum points, you know. It's just subside. Everything, you know. So it's very unpleasant. It's very, you know, very frightening, you know. I was really so fearful, so scared, and my fear come to the maximum points, and it just subsided. But after when it subsided, I was incredibly peaceful. Was so peaceful, and I realized that actually it's all my mind, all my, you know, all the creation of my mind. You know, like I, I hear those, 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 those. Actually, it's the rustles of the the the, the rustles of the leaves. You know the rustling of the leaves, but I hear like, because I interpret that it's someone walking towards me. And this is how we, I, you know, I, I was so fearful. This is how sometimes we, we when, the, when, when whatever emotion come, especially unpleasant, we, you know, or we started followed by thoughts, isn't it? 
we think about it, and then the more we think about it, we become more fearful, isn't it? Then actually we reinforce that because we are not, we are not really stay with that. Actually, when you stay with it, actually, it's not going to stay there forever. It will subside. It go to certain points, you know. It just go, you know. But we we try to push it away. We don't want to experience that. But actually, it's okay. Even pleasant feeling is not going to stay. Unpleasant feelings is not going to stay. So at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, isn't it? Whether it's pleasant or unpleasant, it's not going to stay anywhere. So actually, that's really helped me to overcome that fear. That and then, of course, doesn't mean that that time I overcome fear. That means I don't have fear. You still have fear comes up, but you you become like you because you have that experience. And you know that it's not going to stay. You you know that it's, it hit the maximum. But this is the the directly face it. If we keep running away, how long we can running away? You know. So one day we die. When die when we die, that time also we have to face that moment. Oh, I don't want to live. You know. You know. So it's it's good that we 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 face it now. You know. We practice. You know. To to deal with the fear now. So when we One day we really, you know, when when the time come, the days of it, you know, the end of our life, we need to leave. You can't say, oh, wait a minute, let me, let me, uh, 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 I'm not ready yet, you know. That time you are whether you are ready or not ready, you have to leave everything behind. Nothing we can really hold on to. That's like, and it's good to just face it. And not to run away, but this is how we keep running away from things we don't want to look at it because it's just painful. Especially mental suffering, it's very painful. But actually, you know, we be, you know if we understand, that's why it's very important that we have to start to understand our own mind. That understand this is all things are conditioned. It's just like the, the it's just like the Buddha said, you know, that what we think. You know what we are, we 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 are what we think. The Buddha said, and all that we are arises with thoughts, and with our thoughts we create our own world. You know, so we keep. You know, so we are not really in touch with the reality. We just because we we don't want to, we don't want to, to look at it. So we 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 rather stay there. You know. And maybe fantasize, you know, and go on and on. Then we never wake up. It's always there. So that's this practice is that you know we just bring our mind back to this present moment awareness. So when we eat, we just simply eat. But how many of us can really do that? Just simply eat, isn't it? When we when we eat, we think of something else, you know. So when we walk, we also think of something else. So we don't really. I mean, it sounds. Easy, isn't it? It sounds very. I mean, actually, the practice is very simple, but it's not that easy, isn't it? It sounds simple, you know. You just, you know, just because we 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 add on lots of things, we put on the labor with all the experience that we're experiencing in this moment. You know, we put all the labor that this is easy, isn't it? And then we 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 all have a an idea, a concept of who we are. So whenever that we see something that is not, we think who we are, we we cannot accept it, and we find it is just like we just keep pushing away. We just want to look at it. That's why this. That's why we we like to find distraction. That's why sometimes I some people think that oh, uh, meditation will make someone crazy. I said no, because of because of like if for example, if someone never. Uh, 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 never, never have never done a retreat before, you know. If we ask them to stay, you know, in solitude for three months, they're really crazy, because because of because of when 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 you have no distraction, when it is peaceful, a lot of emotion come out. Especially if you you are not strong enough, if your mind is not stable, it's not strong. You cannot handle. You really cannot handle because it's very it's really overwhelming. That's why you have to train the mind first, you know. That's why usually I ask people if you've never done a retreat, please you 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 go to meditation class. You learn how to meditate first. Then slowly you you do a weekend retreat. Then you do a nine days retreat, you know. Then you slowly then then only you you be able to do like a a a a a three months in in solitude. 
And sometimes people think that oh, you meditate, you become gugu, gugu, you know. It's not, it's not the the meditation, you know. It's just that because of when you you don't have the stability, your mind is not stable. You don't have the strength. It's really because that is all. It's just come out a lot, you know. They say sometimes like someone not stable, we don't allow them to do solitary retreat for three months. Even you know, we we have to make sure that the person is okay. You know, and that they have to, they have to, have to interview, have to know the mind state. Because sometimes when you are not careful, you really, you know, because it's it's too, it's not easy to 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 look at that. That's why, that's why a lot of people, most people, they always use get, getting into this unskillful way to deal with the emotion. So and actually, it's not that we are wrong. It's not that it's wrong. It's not that we are bad to feel that. Because we've been conditioned and we don't know, you know. Sometimes since we were young, you know, and then we've been conditioned, and then and sometimes it, some people start to blame their parents, you know. Sometimes this is how because the we we conditioned by our parents, our parents conditioned by the our the, their parents, isn't it? Our our grandparents, isn't it? Our grandparents conditioned by the great great great. Parents and no, no one fault, you know. So you know, so that's why that we, we can understand. You, this is actually this is the most basic Buddhist teaching that mind is a conditioned thing. Thing happen according to multiple causes and condition. Is 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 not that we are bad, we're terrible person because we've been conditioned that way. Sometimes, like you know, you used to struck me. Like sometimes, I see some people are really very smart, very talented. They have very so very low self esteem and lack of confidence. They just don't think that they're good enough because they've been told that they're not good enough. So they've been conditioned that way. It's not their fault, you know. And I remember that uh, uh, one of our supporters that she's from Singapore. She told me one of her friends in Singapore. You know, they said that the they, they have the business like like uh, that they, they have these classes courses. You know, to teach people how to make Milo, how to cook instant noodles. <laughs> I said, she said, very good business. You know, her friend got the, all these courses. You know, because you know how people just. The the children like a studying machine, you know. You don't have to do anything. All you need to do is study and study and study and get all the result, you know. But and some of them don't know how to do anything. Really, don't even know how to. I I I I know one of my friends that I know long time ago. That time we were we were the helpers of with Mahinda retreat, you know, in 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 Malaysia. So we we were there helping, you know. So so she don't even know whether the water is boiled. And and she is someone that uh, she's a successful career woman. She used to fly in, fly out, you know, China. But she really because at home, you know, I know I don't know here like in in, in especially in like Malaysia Chinese, you know, the Chinese and then I think Singapore and and Hong Kong also, they really oh study is important. All you need to do, you don't have to do anything. All you do is just study. So it's like a study machine, you know. So basically, they don't know how to look after themselves. You know, they don't even know. She said, she asked me, I don't know whether it's boy or not. I said, how come you don't know whether it's boy? I said, at home, how do you deal with that? He said, oh, at home, she said, my cat is got visa. When it's boy, it's whistling. But visa no visa, I don't know. She said. <laughs> And then another lady, and then this this lady told me one of her friends, young girls, first time inviting her boyfriend back to have dinner. She want to cook for her boyfriend, but she said she doesn't know how to cook rice. And she called this uh, my supporter side, said how to cook rice. So my friend gave her the instruction. Okay, the rice you wash the rice and you put water and you put in the cooker, you know, rice cooker. You cook it. And then she called my, she called this、uh, our supporters. You know, what's happened to that? Because a lot of bubbles coming up, you know, from 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 the from the, from the rice cooker. So then my then then this lady said, so how how did you cook it? She used detergent to wash the <laughs> the rice. 
because she said wash. She said, and, and then she said, I said you should have tell her rinse. You know, you said wash. So wash detergent and wash. You know, and then we think that is common sense, isn't it? But sometimes really, that's why sometimes we 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 just ah common sense no need to say ah you think it's common sense. Sometimes you say so clear. Can't see, you know. People just don't don't know. It's really don't know. They never been told. They really don't know how to do it. Like like to us, we think they're so simple. It's common sense things, but there are people really don't know. You know. They say this is important that we really start to. This is whole part of practice actually about understanding oneself, to really look into oneself, to understand, because the more we understand ourselves. The more we can understand others, if we don't understand ourselves, we don't understand others, and actually we have more. Com- the more we understand ourselves, is naturally we have compassion and kindness towards others. Compassion is not about oh poor thing, I pity you. You know, it's not. It's that about understanding the suffering of others, why they behave in a certain way. You know, they say it's important that we we, we understand ourselves, and also. Who we associate with also is important because sometimes when we associate we associate with someone that have same defilements, actually we are reinforce each other defilements, you know, and and we think that it's okay, we are all right, we don't see that, you know. They said this way. They said in one of the the suttas, the the the, the one of the uh, suttas that when 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 Ananda told the Buddha, he said, oh, uh, have a good friend, you know. Uh, 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 associate with someone, you know, a, a, a companion in the holy life, a good good companion in the holy life is half of the the the, the monastic life. The Buddha said no. It's not only to to monastic. I mean, to lay people who you associate with is important. Sometimes you you get you keep reinforce the same defilements without knowing, you know, and then you be in there. You know, it's also this also remind me that just recently there was a, a news that I I read. That this young girl, she's only about she's only about eighteen when she was caught. She was caught because of she was uh in into this prostitution. You know she was uh you know doing this. And then apparently she she ran away from the home when she was about sixteen and very young. And she's very pretty, very pretty. And because of sometimes they don't have happiness in the family. And when she go out, someone very nice to him, the nice nice to her, and and her boyfriend. Said that oh we need to have our own family that we need money so to ask her to do this, and then, and then for me like you know she's been working like for for two years you know so all the money go to the boyfriend, and according the police found out according to the, all the records actually she earned over two years about two millions, but in her bank account she have only ninety thousand, but all the money. Gone to the boyfriend. Said the first reaction is that well, because some people so stupid that you know <laughs> to listen to the boyfriend. But then, then when I ask myself if I'm like her age, you know, if someone keep telling you things that brainwash you, isn't it? And then you will believe, you know, that oh yeah, I I be happy, you know, he will, you know, we be you know happy happy ever after. I got enough money. I earn enough, you know. You have this, you know, and then you you just. Because this is how you've been conditioned, brainwashed, you know. From young, you keep telling them, you know, and we believe that, and then we think we are, you know. We see, this is how we've been conditioned. So they said to 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 recondition, you know, is not easy, but can be done. It's possible to not to repeat that. They said it's become more and more ingrained. If we keep reinforce that tendency, it's become more and more ingrained. Like they said, if we don't understand how the minds work, and then the first response we think that oh, really silly, stupid. How come some some people believe this? Uh, you know why so silly? But you know sometimes be brainwashed. It's just like all of you come here. Also, Ajahn Brahm myself, we 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 are brainwashing you too. You know, <laughs> but we we brainwash you. We brainwash you in a in a in a wholesome way, a good way. We ask you to practice kindness, being a virtuous person. You know, because that is is actually is not good or bad. It's not right or wrong. It's just that when we when we when we commit an unwholesome, unskillful, uh, 
we, we, we have unskillful, un, unwholesome behavior that lead us to suffering. You know, so that's why when, when we, what we do, if we, we have this uh, we, uh, a virtuous person, and uh, when we do something that is wholesome and that leads us to happiness and freedom, that's all. It's not good or bad, right or wrong, you know. So that's why we, we just condition in, a, in the way that to lead us to free of suffering. So we have to keep, to change our usual way of thinking our mental habitual pattern. So then we don't go back the same way, we have to recondition ourselves. So that's why we really have to look into ourselves and investigate to look at why we suffer now, where is it coming from? You know, if we want to have a different result, so we don't keep doing the same thing, isn't it? We don't expect that we have a different result by doing, keep doing the same thing. It's not going to be different, you know? We keep doing the same thing, we expect we have different results. We think that just our wishful thinking, we just hope that hopefully our suffering will go away. If we, you know, we, 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 we think that, you know, we, we think long enough, you know, just uh, our wishful thinking, no, you know. We, we, we are the one who are responsible for our own happiness. It's not others. So that's why we have to understand, try to look into ourselves and understand why we suffer now. Look at the cause, you know, to understand. To under we, we, sometimes people try to solve problems but without understanding the problem. The first thing you have to understand the problem first. If you don't understand and you think that you're going to solve it, you can never solve any problem. So that's why just have to really, you know, develop the clarity and just really look into ourselves and investigate and ultimately that we are our own good friends. So because at the end of our life, no one is going to hold our hand and, and leave this world with us. We ourselves. So we be our own good friends. So not expecting our situation will change, our suffering will go by just wishing that it's going to go away. No, it's not going to go away. So we have to, we have to look at it, we have to investigate what causes us this suffering. So, and, um, and not to, to expect that. And, and sometimes people get into all this, like doing all this, you know, rites and ritual. They think that, you know, maybe I can pray the Buddha enough or I go to the temple, pray enough, then my, my bad karma all gone. It doesn't work like that. It's not going to help you, you know, it's not going to change. We have, if you want, you know, to have different results, we have to change ourselves. We have to look into ourselves. So, okay, before we, I end the met, uh, I end this uh, uh, the tonight talk, so I just, I just remind me one of the jokes, like the last joke that I'm going to tell you. <laughs> so, th there was a family, the father and the mother and the son. They live in a very removed place. They've never been out to the city. The first time they, they come out, you know, they went to the city, they, 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 they go to a, a, the mall, you know, a shopping center. And the first time, of course, to them, it's something that's really new. They've never been, you know, first time, you know, from removed place to come to the city. And then from the first floor, they went up to the second floor. And everything to, to them is really amazing. They've never seen that. And then certainly, the, 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 hus the, the husband, the father, was uh, get, uh, uh, attracted to the wall because he saw the wall that is the door open and closed and open and closed. And then he saw one uh, old lady, were really old, you know, frail, you know, and, you know, uh, walk into the walk into the the the, the, the leaf, you know, and then close. He saw go in there and close. Then, 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 then this this old lady go down to from third floor, second, and to the ground, uh, uh, to the uh, first floor. Then, so open the the leaf and she. She walked out, and there come a beautiful, you know, lady, very sexy, very beautiful, go into the lift, and then he's go first floor, second floor, third floor, and then ding, open the lift, and then the then this this man he saw the immediately the moment he saw this lady, he said, and turn around, ask the son, where's your mom? Go and get your mom.
So we think that is a magic, ah. We, then we can change our life just like that, ah. You know, this is how we all have that, isn't it? We just, you know, all this wishful thinking. So yeah. So tonight talks about. Uh, uh, thank you for listening. Tonight talk is idio about idiosyncrasies. Okay. Thank you for listening. Any questions or comments? So Tracy from Canada, what do we do when we notice someone else isn't compassionate or understanding and so is pointing out another person's idiosyncrasies and making fun and berating them? They say sometimes like, um, we cannot control other people, but we can always control ourselves because we don't have to be responsible for someone's action. You know? But when we do something unwholesome, we have to be responsible for our own action. That's why it's very important that if someone being unkind to us, make sure that we don't do that. So it's important. If even someone, you know, no matter how how terrible the person may be, the person being very nasty to us, saying terrible things to us, but we make sure that we don't do that to the other person because that anyway, the person will be responsible for their own action. But if we do that, we have to be responsible for our own action. So, so any more questions or comments for any one of you here? Yes. And it gives you the rights. Love is love. Mm. Yeah. Very good. So, any more questions or comments? More questions or comments? Any more? Ah, this one there. sister uh -huh. um, you spoke about running away from our suffering in mm. the different ways that we do it are there certain uh, wholesome ways to run away from our suffering uh, yes uh, the the is the best way is uh, to, to really stay with that with fat feelings you know there's uh, sometimes it's good that if you know that you feel you know this feeling is unpleasant sometimes you can find a peaceful place you know just to sit with that feelings, just to feel how is it feel like, just because we don't like it because it's unpleasant. You know, just you know. That's why it's important that the, in daily life you have to develop your 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 your, your mental strength. You know, develop your awareness, your mindfulness, and also uh, to make your mind and peaceful and calm. That is very important because I know sometimes that. Uh, we have like this skillful means that you know you 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 reflect on this, you reflect on that. But because with that also is thinking. Sometimes when you are not careful, the reflection become like thinking. You know, you get sucked in again. You know, so that's why really to to overcome that is to really face it, stay with that. And when when the first time you experience that. When you overcome it, you, you slowly you get better. This is how my experience. Like the first time is really really unpleasant, but and then and then after that slowly, I, and then I become like you become more. The, your, your, when your awareness become more and more, uh, 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 when you develop that and you strengthen your, your your mindfulness and awareness, actually you can pick up very quickly. Even sometimes you you can. They say it's very very good. Like some of the way that you can. Uh, if you find that very difficult to stay with that, actually you just place attention onto your body. So how is it feel like? Is it there is a lot of tension in my body? Is it is a lot of tightness there? So because when we pay attention on our feelings and sensation, then uh, we don't start into the thinking process. 
Because once we, we, we suck in there, then, you know, we reinforce and we create more suffering for ourselves, you know. And all this is just all the proliferation, you know. It might, be, might be this, might be that, and then we become more fearful. Sometimes we become like fear of the fear. So it's any, you know, even if panicking attack or whatever, you know, just, just stay. And just, just to, to, to pay attention how you feel. Feel your body, how your body feels like. Usually when you have that, your body feels very tight. You tense up. You feel the, the, you know, the tightness that, you know. And actually, that's, that's also helped you de develop that mindfulness. We have someone have this, uh, I used to have, a, we have someone like, this person been talking to me for a while that he got this uh, panicking attack anxieties. And then, uh, so I, I told him that, you know, whenever you have this, you, you just have a deep breath, you know, and then just feel how you feel like that moment, the, how your body, how your stomach. So rather than, you know, don't follow the thoughts. And, and after six months, he told me that he's getting quite good. Even now that the that, that attack come, he, he, he be able to really, to, to, not to follow that, he be able to go, you know, because he, he been doing that. Because actually it's a form of meditation when you, that, that, that feelings and sensation like become your uh, object. You know, you just focus on that. He just, because rather than, you know, go into the thinking, go into the thoughts, like, just like the Buddha said, then we started to create something out of it, out of nothing. Is that answer your questions? It makes sense to you? Any more questions or comments? This one. Thanks for the talk. Uh, you mentioned that uh, mm. perfectionism is uh, a little bit of a suffering as well. Uh, I kind of agree with that, but if, uh, like, um, my wife, she's a perfectionist, mm -hmm. and uh, it's okay with household um, mm -hmm. tasks, but I, 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 she suffers a lot at her work when mm -hmm. she doesn't perform uh, the mm -hmm. way she expected. Mm -hmm. How can I help her to mm -hmm. overcome the suffering since this is almost like, mm -hmm. on a, mm -hmm. yeah, on her profession is almost like a mm -hmm. good skill, you know, mm -hmm. let's say. Because this one, unless she can see it herself, just like me, like before that, I, I don't see that because to me it's something normal, you know, in the world that what's wrong with that, you know, building perfect, to be someone perfect, you know, nothing wrong. But un until when I started, they said the only way that when, when she developed the peace and the calm and she be re really see herself, you, you cannot, you, you can't tell someone, you know, the person have to really be able to see themselves. Like for me, only I realize it when, when I started to practice when my mind become peaceful and I realize that. But before that, I don't see that and I don't think that is a problem. Do you know what I mean? I don't see that that lead me to suffering because sometimes, sometimes this, this suffering is, is, is not, it's a more refined suffering and sometimes we don't, think that is a suffering, but as we practice, as our mind become, uh, um, we have more clarity and become more refined, so we can pick up, the, you know, we could become more aware of that, you know. So, I mean, you can just slowly, you know, influence her, you know, to, to, to come to a meditation class, you know, to practice, you know, and <laughs> Don't try to convert her, but <laughs> but actually, it's very important that how actually you can influence her when when you are peaceful and calm. Actually, this is the best gift that you can give to her. You know, that's why I keep telling people like you know, you don't try to convert, and then you know, you just practice yourself through your own behavior. That you, when you are a peaceful and calm person, she can feel that. And then she started to uh, get interested. Oh, what, what do you do? Uh, do you meditate? This is how, you know. But don't try, because the more you try, she will run away, you know, just by 
by being, you know, it's just like you practice yourself actually that you being a peaceful and calm person, happy person itself actually is a teaching. That is the best teaching that we can offer. That is teaching by example. We can tell people everything, you know. Like I remember my, 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 sister, my sister, you know, she's a beautician and she sells all these, you know, products, you know. So she always choose the girls that very nice complexion because, <laughs> because you, you can, it's not convincing, isn't it? If someone, someone not happy and then you try to tell other people how to be happy, who believe you, isn't it? So that's like you, you, you have to, you know, practice yourself and then really, you know, influence her through your own, you know, behavior and, uh, you know, with your being a peaceful and calm person. And she can feel the energy. And this is only slowly then, you know, she can understand and she can see that. Is it make sense to you all? Does that answer your question? It definitely does. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Any more questions or comments? Okay. I think, let's see if we can... Uh, and this uh, tonight's talk.